Academic Officer and Chief of Student Services for Hardin County Schools. Thanks for joining us this month on our Impacting Learning and Empowering Students segment. Uh, this is an exciting time of the year for me, uh, I think for all of Hardin County Schools. We're a little over halfway through the year, and I liken this to, to like a, a basketball season or, or a football season. It's, it's halftime, <laughs> and uh, we've been able to kind of evaluate and assess where we're at, you know, and uh, where, where do we start and where do we want to finish. And we've uh, taken the iReady test a few times this year with our kids in uh, K through 8. We've evaluated our KSA scores that came in back in October. Uh, we've got the high school kids are working on CERT, preparing for the ACT coming up later on in March. So it's just that time of year that's exciting. Uh, kids get a chance to sit down and really start talking about their improvement, uh, which is what we're all about here in Hardin County School. So once again, it's not where you start, uh, it's where you finish. And uh, that growth mindset that we have here in Hardin County Schools does not just begin and end with our students. It, it begins and ends with our teachers, uh, our, our assistant principals, our principals, our counselors, our directors, our chiefs. Our superintendent, Ms. Morgan, she is a goal setter. And uh, she's always, always looking for that next way that we can improve as a school district. So thanks for joining us on this segment that we can talk about our growth mindset and goal setting here in Hardin County Schools. I've got three of our great administrators here with us here today. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves and tell us where they're from. Go ahead, Chris, and we'll start with you first. Hello, I'm Kristen Swords and I'm principal at West Harden Middle School. Hello, my name is Brittany Nichol, principal of East Harden Middle School. Hi, I'm Lisa Sturman. I'm the principal at Radcliffe Elementary School. You know, I always like to talk about the, the practices we have going on here in this district and it starts right there in our cradle school. It starts in our preschool. It starts in our kindergarten with our foundational literacy, our foundational numeracy, and all those practices, they just keep getting better and better. They get on into our middle school, and we, we start thinking about our student-centered practices, our, our project-based learning, and then we start thinking about career, career exploration, our uh, career and technical education courses, our 39 pathways, becoming post-secondary ready. We've got this process that builds on itself, and we do that by, by, by goal setting. I think it's kind of the way we think about that. Um, and we think about goals, the, the term we always used to use for the past 30 years was our SMART goals. You know, were goals, were they, uh, were they specific, were they measurable, were they achievable? Right? For the R, we talk about being, being relevant uh, to, to the kid and uh, realistic in a sense. And then can goals be timely? Can we reach them in a timely fashion when we set goals with kids? So uh, I'm just going to kind of start off with you, Brittany, and just kind of say, how do you go about, as a leader of your building at East Harden Middle School, set goals for the year? By the end of the year, if you say, this is what success is going to look like for us, how do you motivate your students and your school and your staff to, to reach those? Uh, Mr. Sutton, I think you said a key word there is motivate. And as we know, middle school students can be difficult uh, to motivate both academically, uh, behaviorally, and you know, just coming to school in general. So we have taken um, a kind of competition approach um, to motivating our middle school students and we call it um, our team pride um, and so each grade level is a team they have a team name and from quarter one to two to three and four we are on quarters we have a competition between our grade levels and um, we compete with attendance and we compete with behavior um, honor roll and service. We have really incorporated service with our new work ethic standards and so we um, offer a service uh, project each quarter. So today actually ironically I just announced the second quarter standings and so we got everybody in the gym and we do a big rally and I make a big deal out of who gets a ribbon for um, attendance for the second quarter and those ribbons first place they get two points and second place they get one point. And so whoever has the best discipline and um, I, we talked as administrators talk to kids all the time. Hey, you know, we can't let this uh, behavior slip on us. We we need to be you need to gain a point to beat the seventh grade. Um, and so at the end, we end up having a team of the year. We celebrate them. They, their name goes on a banner. We uh, like to get them ice cream, get them some extra time to socialize, which is ultimately what a middle schooler works for is uh, <laughs> extra social time. Um, but so we um, have been doing this for years. It's been a East Harden tradition um, to, to have a competition between the grade levels. Um, even twice a year, we get in the gym and do some games as well, some kind of like minute to win it games and they earn a ribbon as well. So that is one way we try to motivate our students to set goals um, to meet 
um, a, a, just a team a team goal. They they really get competitive. Uh, but getting down back to academics, um, of course we do um, honor roll. So who has the highest GPA for that grade? But um, you mentioned already. And so we have a school-wide goal that um, all students have to do 30 minutes of I Ready My Path uh, for math and reading. We work on that during homeroom, so that is a, a school-wide goal. And here coming up in March, uh, we'll do our traditional March Madness and see um, which team can beat the other team um, as far as homerooms go. And so that, that's a, an exciting time. Winners getting some, some donuts uh, for uh, winning that March Madness. Um, and then we just get down to uh, sitting down with um, students as a class and um, setting goals to beat another class even. Two seventh grade language arts teachers will compete against one another to see who can ha see the most growth from you know, winter to spring. So, so just lots of um, goal setting, I guess, to motivate students are happening right now at East Tartan. Well, that's a question. Who's winning right now? <laughs> right. Which so actually, um, in the lead is our sixth grade, and they're called the Rookies. Uh, we have a baseball theme, so we have the Rookies, the Legends, and the All-Stars. Right. And cool. so um, our Rookies are in the lead, and actually eighth grade won last year, so they are, okay. they are fighting to get their title back, and they're the Legends. So the sixth grade group is motivated. Uh, but something I like that you said was when we talk about being very specific with our, our goals here, you didn't just talk about test scores and right. KSA scores. You know, I heard you mention I already. I heard you mention attendance. And I heard how important it is for kids to be there every day. Talk about honor row, the process we go through to get good grades and improve a little bit each day so I can get good grades, but then maybe perform well when it comes to an I ready assessment or, you know, a KSA assessment. You won't do good on that unless you do your daily work. So I'm glad you broke it down to smaller parts for your kids to understand everybody has to do their part to succeed so the team can be good, whether right. it's the rookies, the legends of the whole school. Right. <laughs> uh, that, that's kind of the point, but uh, thank you for being very specific on that. Kristen, uh, I, I'm going to put a little uh, pressure on you here to say, now let's break this down to the individual student. How do you sit down with each individual student to say, this is how we need you to improve to be the best you can be uh, to help our school? How do you all approach that at West Harden Middle School? Absolutely. So um, I am going to add to what Ms. Nichols shared, though. Our sixth grade is currently in the lead with grade level competitions, awesome. too. So these sixth graders are coming in strong. That's great. Like and, <laughs> uh, and we always try to announce that and encourage our seventh and eighth graders to step up their game. So that's, uh, that's interesting. Hey. So we do take the school level approach, too, but then we get down to what's your part as an individual yeah. student in that grade level uh, competition or school competition. And so um, we involve all staff in that. So at certain times throughout the year, teachers are responsible for having that conversation with their students in their class. Um, that is more centered around academics and I ready. And so teachers will sit down with each student in their classroom and they will talk about how are you doing on your math I ready diagnostic. Let's set a goal for that. How are you doing on reading? Uh, but we want students to see that everybody in the building truly cares about the progress that they're making and the growth that we are seeing. So we have two times throughout the year where our admin team, so myself, the assistant principals, and the counselors will sit down with all students, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Um, and we will also talk to them about how they're doing on KSA and how they are doing on their iReady test. And we have a little form that we fill out with them that's emoji based so they can take it home to their parents and talk about whether they made growth or not. And then we also encourage them to think about what are your next steps. So whether you met your goal or not, how can you with your parents and with the staff at West Harden talk about what next steps will help you get there. Um, so it's really good for them to see, yes, I did, or no, I didn't, but I'm almost there, but also to actually identify those things that will help them get to the next level. Sure, there's, uh, you know, when we said, talk about I ready individual goal setting, there's typical growth, mm -hmm. and then there's stretch growth. And I think when we talk about kids growing one, you know, one year of instruction, each year they step in our building, you know, we owe that to the students. Uh, they, owe that to, they owe that to themselves. Uh, the work ethic that it takes to do that uh, it takes a tremendous amount of, uh, of, of work. So when we sit down and look at a kid who has their typical growth met, we push them to the stretch growth. That takes a conversation. And when they know the, the assistant principal, the counselor, and the principal is all in with them, I think they more buy into the system and say, hey, they believe I can do this. That's part, that's part, of, that's part of goal setting is, a, is the belief system that I can, I can achieve my goal. And that goes in the A part of 
the SMART goal. I can achieve it. Uh, so let's talk about, Lisa, let's talk about the, the parent side of things. You know, everybody out here is listening. We've got 14,000 students here in this district right now. 14,000 almost to the number. It's pretty good. So you look at the number, there could be up to 28,000, you know, parents and guardians uh, that help support the work that we're doing here in the district, which is greatly appreciated. How do you go about getting parents to play some role in the goal setting process there at Radcliffe Elementary School? So um, one of the things that we do, uh, like both uh, Ms. Nichols and Ms. Swords, we, we go in, we set it, the goal with the student, or we have the student set the goal for themselves, and then we kind of go behind them and, and, and talk about, like you said, is it relevant, is it timely? Um, but we have a form that we send home that we ask the parent to review that goal with the student um, for relevancy. Is, is this something I can achieve? Is, is this doable? But then, like Ms. Sword said, how do I do it? What are my steps to get there? We talked a lot this time around that we set goals about how sometimes we need that goal accountability. Um, so we talked to our students about choosing a buddy for their goals um, and encourage them to choose their parents. So that was kind of our motivation for our form is to take this home, take it to mom, dad, grandma, whoever your grown up is, um, and have them help you be accountable for making that goal, but making those steps toward that goal. It's really easy to set a goal, um, but it's really hard to make a plan to hit that goal sometimes for our littles. So we encourage the parents to be part of that. We did something called a student showcase right before we went to Christmas break, um, which was a really good time for us to set our goals as well so that we could have our parents in our building and help them, have them help us be a part of that as a team. So. Right, right, even with Senate Bill 9, we think about the kids that fall below the 25th percentile in their reading or math. We've actually set up parent meetings with those parents to Absolutely. come in and say, here are some strategies we can give you for you to take action with your kids at home. That's accountable for all of us. It shows we're all in this together. Uh, sometimes a, a kid's not just going to move on their own. It takes the parent, uh, the counselor, the teacher, and the administrator to work together to make that happen. So thank you for having that plan in place uh, there, there at Radcliffe. Now I have to ask this question. You know, it's kind of like goes back to, and we'll kind of leave this at the end, what's the impact? But I guess the question is, after we do this goal setting, and uh, you, you basically have to say, what sense of direction does this give your school, and how does it change the focus at your school? If we do this goal setting, what information does it give us? Did it, did it cause us to change what we're doing uh, to get a different result? So, uh, I don't know, Kristen, if you just want to add a little bit on that from West Arden, let's kind of go around the, the room here on that one. Yeah, so I think absolutely. With middle school students, a lot of the times it's just making them aware of where they're currently at. And I always compare it with, like, if they're wanting to get better in band, how much time are you putting forth and practicing that band instrument? Yes. If you're wanting to get better on the baseball field or whatever it may be and talking about those next steps. Um, a lot of our goals that we set with our students, like when we're talking about our ready, we meet on those like three times a year just because of how the testing happens. But we've started to work on a lot of goals um, that we talk about more frequently. Um, so with project-based learning, we're talking about goals around how did you work on um, oral communication today in class? Or how did you work on group work or collaborating with your peers? So that's a more frequent um, conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think with that, we're seeing the bigger impact because it's like they're constantly aware of where their current standing is and what their next step is. And they're doing that reflecting part, which is huge with goal setting. If you're not reflecting and um, really making those next Next steps and talking about where you're currently at, then that uh, end goal can kind of seem far off and long down the road. And so with what we have in place now, it seems like that's more of a constant conversation that's being had and our students are really aware of where they're at and where they need to go. And hopefully they can start verbalizing that more um, to their teachers, to their parents, um, and to themselves because that's where we'll see the big difference and the impact. I'd like to interject. I think you made a really good point in that those more frequent goals, those smaller goals that are a little more um, on the daily, I think that that's where elementary really sees um, the bang for the buck and that the, the, even the three times a year, a year with iReady, it seems so far apart and spread out. Um, so when we do the more daily or in the classrooms with our teachers, um, that seems to be the bigger impact. That and getting the parents, our littles, they don't always understand to go back and look at those goals. How did I do? Did I get that? That's where we really need our parents' help. That's where we really need our community help is to kind of remind those littles if they're going to be their, their goal buddy, how did you do on that? And, you know, for some of us who um, need a little, 
a couple more extra buddies, I guess. Um, you know, some of our staff play that role as well to kind of go back in on the daily because that seems to be the biggest impact. Sure. Uh, Brittany, why do you think you did? Just the only thing I can, uh, this made me uh, think of when we check mid-year on where we are, this brings a lot, especially for our eighth graders, if they don't have a certain iReady score, then they may be uh, on a path for an intervention class at the high school. And once again, it's another motivator. Hey, I'm going to lose my electives um, if I don't meet my goal, my 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 stretch goal or my typical growth. So it's a motivator for students because if we didn't bring this to them and make them aware, they might not try as hard. And so it's a goal that they have to set. Hey, I want to make sure I'm able to take the electives that I want to wake that I want to uh, take. And also, as teachers. Uh, we have to see that if we don't check on that, those, that kid may need an intervention or they may need to um, be a, applied for gifted and talented. They may have reached that threshold. And so in order to make sure we're getting all the resources kids need, it's, it's great to check on uh, what goals have been set for our kids. Right. When you think about a, a kid who is a, what, a ninth grade student, if they, if they went to preschool, they've been in school for how many years or what, 10, almost mm -hmm. 10 years? And you say, you say to a kid, where do you want to be? Where do you want to be in four years? And they really start thinking about that, uh, that, that the answer to that question. We have so many opportunities here for them uh, to help them reach a goal of where they want to be. But I think sometimes what we forget in the goal setting process, we forget to write it down. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, I know an approach we took when I was serving as principal of Don Grove is we had student data binders for every grade level and we created specific things that they had to chart but then those student data binders and the students had to do the charting. So if you ask a student where they were in their multiplication facts, they didn't rely on reflex math, tell them they had to write it down. They knew. Uh, and if, if, wherever they are on their, uh, their goal for, for IRA, they had to write it down. And so that, I think it's important that we write down our goals so we have something to refer back to. Because when we talk to kids, they should be able to verbalize that back to us. This is where I am, this is where I want to be. And I think that that's what we have to remember in our conversations as leaders is, and I ask a lot of high school kids that question, not as many middle school or elementary kids, because sometimes they're still exploring. And when the kids get to high school and they choose that pathway, they're on that path of uh, where I want to end up. Uh, as a senior doing co-op or an internship and thinking about college scholarships or athletics along with academics, there's a lot of things we offer here in Hardin County Schools. So that's why I'm proud to serve here um, in this role, and I'm glad to work with great leaders like this in our schools because we know they work with our teachers and our parents and our students to make a difference. So. Uh, if there's anything you want to add about the impact this is having on your school, uh, please do so. Uh, anybody else have anything you want to add or nothing, nothing, nothing for the good of the order? Or go ahead. I think we just take every opportunity, and I know they do as well, to celebrate. So, Absolutely. like, celebrate. after we spend all of this time monitoring goals, talking about goals, and we do all have parent conferences where we share that with our families, um, and then celebrate. And that's the best part, um, is to recognize the effort that they put into all of their, their work and to show the students that, hey, it paid off, and look what you're able to do because of that. So by our students Absolutely. and our staff. Uh, well, thank you for joining us on uh, this uh, session of Impact Learning and Empowering Students. Hope you enjoy listening to some of our students talk about the ghost setting they're doing out in their schools. Thank you, and uh, see you next month. Uh, Mrs. Kazarovich, I'm a third grade teacher here at Radcliffe Elementary. Um, the students are setting their iReady diagnostic goals for their test for winter. So they took their tests in the fall, and that is a baseline of where they are at in reading and math. Um, and then by the end of the school year, it would tell us what their typical growth is, and then if they work really hard, what their stretch growth is they're going to be taking a mid-test. So I'm trying to show them what their typical growth can be by the end of the school year and their stretch growth and letting them choose what goal do they have to meet in those subjects by the end of the school year. And then I'm going to use those um, for them to determine how much of that growth do they want to show in their winter test when they're about halfway through the school year. And so far, do you think they're setting realistic goals? I, th I think so, and I think having that um, that typical and stretch, stretch growth already in there helps them on their real, realistic goals. I do have some who want to really shoot for the moon and some who are, oh, I can only score two, but I think uh, sometimes it's the understanding of what those numbers actually mean. Now, for the winter diet, this is for 
the springtime, okay? So in order to get from, which, give me a number, by, by the spring, what do you want to get to? 524. I want to be all the way there. 524 for the spring? Yes. Okay, so that would mean you would need to grow by plus 40. Now for the winter, how many of that do you want to grow by? Like 10 of those. 10 of those? Okay. So that would be, what, do you know what 484 plus 10 is? 494. 494, good. So you're going to put your 494 here. Oh, no. I want to be at 524. I know, but that'll be by the springtime. And you're going to be taking your test in December and at the end of the year. And I want to be at 510 in December. 510 in December? Okay. So cross that off, right? 510. I am Amanda Scanlon. I'm a third grade teacher at Radcliffe Elementary. And today we're working on our iReady goal setting. Um, we are explaining to the students where they scored on their fall iReady diagnostic tests. And we're giving them an opportunity to set their own goals for their December iReady test so that they can see how they can improve their own scores and really take charge of their own education. Does that make sense? All right, so let's make some new goals. So for your reading score, I'll tell you what, you rocked your reading test, okay? You scored 536 points. That is amazing, okay? 536. So by the end of this school year, okay, we want to see you hit 558 points, but that is by the end of the school year. So that's not something we need you to hit right now, okay? We're gonna to work towards that all year long. So, to get you from 536 to 558, which is about 20 points, right? How do you think, how many points do you think you can pro project to, to score in your December test? About halfway between 536 and 558. Our admin team here at West Harden has been goal setting with students over the past couple of weeks. Myself, the assistant principals, and our counselors have all been a part of the process. We found that it's really beneficial if all of us get involved in talking to our students about how they're doing in class. So it's not only their math teacher or their reading teacher that they're hearing from, they're getting the opportunity to talk to us about how they're scoring on the already test as well as the KSA test, and then they're getting the chance to set goals with us. So we're having this conversation in in preparation for a family data night that we have coming up on November the 14th and our students are going to then turn around and lead those conferences about their data and how they're doing in the reading and math areas with their families so this is again preparation with us so that we can answer any questions that they may have and so that they better understand how they're scoring and what types of goals they're setting for themselves so when we sit down with each student, and we've done this with all 500 of our students, we uh, first take a chance to ask them how things are going in the classroom and how school is going so far this year. And then we are sharing with them their KSA results for the first time. So this is the first time that they have been able to see how they scored on last year's KSA test. And because the test and the reporting of the data is a little different, we are taking a little bit of time to explain it to our students about the novice, apprentice, proficient, and distinguished scale. And then we set a goal with them. But we only take the KSA test once a year, so iReady is really a better indicator for us. So the iReady test is taken three times a year, and we really talk with our students all throughout the year about how they're doing on iReady, not just on the three diagnostics, but also the My Path that they complete daily. That's a very individualized lesson plan for them based on the skills that they are needing to recoup if they are missing any, or skills that will push them to the next level. So we just sit down with each student and we talk with them. We go ahead and set a goal for our winter test that is coming up. And we also go ahead and talk about a goal for the KSA test that they'll take at the end of the year. 
And then at the winter time, our teachers will do this with students. And then admin will sit down again in the spring and do this with students. So someone will be goal setting with our students individually, one-on-one, -on -one, three times throughout the year to talk to them about their data and reading and math and how they're scoring. And also to ask them if there's anything that we can do to provide them extra support. We've really enjoyed this time. It's a great time with each of our students. And we hope to see that they are showing lots of success in the winter whenever we test. And then again, in the the spring whenever we sit down with them and talk about how many goals they've met and accomplished. So let's look at math real quick. All right, so what was score did you get on the math test? 503. Okay. And again, I already set that goal, okay? So notice that you're a little bit on math below that grade level line, okay? Yeah. And that's okay. That's why we do my path. That helps you make up the skills that you're missing right now. So 515 <coughs> is your goal, okay? So that is a 12 point difference for the whole year. So again, what are we gonna do for the winter test? We're gonna cut that in half, right? So you're gonna grow six points by the winter and six points by the spring, and that'll make sure that you meet your goal. All right, hello, my name is Brittany Nickel, principal of East Hardin Middle School. And this evening we're hosting our second quarter open house in which we're calling our Student Spectacular. And the goal and purpose of this evening is for parents to come in and for their student, their child, to show them what they have been learning for the first and second quarter um, in their classrooms. Uh, several of our math and um, reading classes have also goal set. Um, with their iReady and KSA scores, so they are also sharing with their parents uh, what their goals are for the winter iReady um, and also what they want to score in the state assessment um, this spring. Um, primarily, we are trying to go toward more a project-based learning um, and classroom environment and students are showcasing their projects to their parents explaining what they created, why they created it, and the final outcome. So uh, parents are going around to each classroom getting a signature or a stamp and they are also picking up their student individual scores. Um, so lots to, to do this evening. Um, we also have some treats available for purchase, so hopefully just a fun evening um, getting to talk to parents um, about what the learning that's happening at East Harden.